Hello, my friends, and welcome back to New Delancia, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. Uh, in the last session, we had just set up camp on our way to Bunaver, um, which is uh, kind of the main city of this region. What's the region called again? This region of the world. Okay, earlier but that was showing me this, and, <laughs> and now it's not, so I don't know what's going on with that. But... Um, yeah, so we uh, we had just set up camp. Um, Val had uh, had gathered some food for everyone, and um, everybody was doing some like cooking stuff. So at this point, we've all been uh, we've all had a long rest. Um, you guys can go ahead and set your HP back up to full. I need to actually do the same on Ant and Val here. Did Val even take any damage? Does Val ever take any damage? <laughs> it's pretty beefy. No, Antares is the one who gets in the, gets in there first. Yeah, usually, right? Uh, so we just set up camp uh, along the riverside here. And uh, at this point, the sun is coming up, and you guys are about to uh, disembark once more for uh, Boonaver. Uh, does anybody have any preparations they'd like to make before we uh, disembark? Uh, I don't have anything that I'm aware of. Okay. So I've had quite a bit of conversation uh, with you folks about uh, how uh, travel is going to work or how you guys ideally think travel should work um, or, you know, how it's worked best for you in the past. Uh, with all of the things that you've input, I kind of came up with my own system. I was going to test that out today. Uh, so essentially the way that I'm going to work this is I'm going to start by rolling 1d4, like a so. And we rolled a 4, uh, which is a good thing. So this is the number of hours that we're going to travel without incident. Um, which does that? Let me see. So you guys were at the river. That puts us third, that puts us like, well... Well, you guys said, you guys were at the, uh, the Hanboltosh River, um... And only just a uh, just a few miles uh, outside of uh, Boonaver. So with uh, four hours of uninterrupted travel, that's actually a third of the way. Uh, well, actually, that's actually the rest of the way. <laughs> well, I thought I thought to Boonaver, it was a twelve-hour trip from uh, from uh, from Staskar. Staskar. Uh, but in the last session, because we didn't have this uh, this much of oh, the yeah. the trip pre-planned, we actually made most of the trip last time. Uh, so you guys, uh, you guys actually make it all the way there without uh, without any issue based on that one die roll. What's the river called again? Uh, that is called. I'm sorry. Give me just one moment. Let me pull that back up. That was called the Han Han Boltash River. Uh, I like that. Sounds maybe like put that in a uh, maybe put that in a uh, chat. Han Moltash Thank River. Um, so there's the there's the map there. Let me move back over. So uh, you guys arrive at Bunaver, uh, and you're entering. Um, the road kind of wraps around the city on the south side and crosses over um, the river that's uh, running right next to it. That's uh, called the. Uh, <laughs> Bukathambe River. Let me put that also in chat. I um yeah, I can't make these up. They're <laughs> they're being generated. <laughs> uh so you guys uh approach through this uh this western gate right here that I've just pinged on the map. Uh, I hope everybody saw that. Uh yeah. but it's next to the uh what's called West Gate. Uh, and these huge uh well they're not really huge um they're pretty big though uh, arches kind of come up into a and uh, form this portcullis and uh they're along the um kind of along the arches there are these very intricately designed like faces and uh and other um very ornate looking uh dwarven um uh dwarven like designs um, so that's what you're greeted with when you come up. The gates are, are open, uh, and people are kind of freely coming and going. Uh, you can see through the gate that the city is just absolutely bustling. There are tons of people kind of milling about in the streets, going about their daily routines. 
So with four hours, it's around midday. Um, it's it's kind of coming up on midday. Okay. Okay, so you kind of have your choice of what to do at this point. So I would turn to uh, Fayal and say, well, you know the area better than we do. Uh, where would you suggest we go about towards the magic district? Towards the magic district? By whatever for? To identify our necklace. Oh, well... That would uh, that would definitely be in the north district, which is uh, this kind of pink area here. Uh, just go to the center of town, and um, and you'll find the building in there. And then... um, there's a small shop who, uh, um, it's about here, uh, with a sage residing, who can likely identify it for you. And then uh, turn towards the group. Do. Do we all want to get go together, or are there things you guys need to take care of? I don't have anything special to do. Let's go try to figure this out. Is everybody on board with this? Anybody else have anything else they want to be doing at this point? Uh, I'll go for now. Okay, bear with me for a moment while I generate some stuff Oops. Okay. Perfect. Uploading that now. Your name is Okay, so you guys, uh, you guys arrive at this, uh, this very small shop, um, that, uh, that just smells, uh, very vibrantly of this, uh, incense. It's a very musky, uh, kind of scent about it. Uh, as you enter, uh, the lights are low, and there are shelves all lining the sides of this place with various, uh, trinkets and, and other, uh, odds and ends, uh, about. Uh, definitely there is a, uh, a very smoky, a kind of atmosphere about and a very magical kind of nature to the place and uh, as you enter the building a, um, a rather small and elderly uh, human uh, actually uh, resides at the counter this is her, her name and uh, she kind of greets you hello how Greetings. can i help we came across an item on our travels and we had some unusual encounters uh, in the forest, and we were wondering if perhaps you could help us to identify it. Magic items. Um, let me see. Tess produced then... the bag from her bag. So she kind of leans over this counter and, and grabs the pendant and holds it very close in front of her, her eyes, and she squints at it. Um, for a moment before she reaches underneath the counter and produces a small looking glass and peers through it. Hmm. Yes. I can tell you the nature of this uh, of this trinket, but it'll cost you. How much would it cost us, old lady? Oh. 50 gold pieces should suffice. Taz gives her 50 gold pieces. I'm 37. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> 37. <laughs> uh, so you already have enough women. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so she, uh, she places the trinket down and, um, on the counter and she looks you dead in the eyes and she says, this magical artifact reeks of Evil, dark energies, summoning energies. 
This is, hmm. yes, this is definitely a trinket used as a focus for dark summoning from the abyss, um, from the, uh, what, what's done? from the infernal plains. Best to, uh, best to destroy it, I'd Any say. way to tell, um, where a pendant like this would be made and sold? Mm -hmm. So she pulls the, uh, gla the looking glass back out and it's kind of... <clears throat> examining it kind of more closely, she's turning it around, kind of looking for any kind of identifier and... It is definitely an old trinket. Likely much older than me. And that's saying something. And I am very old. I'm 37! <laughs> I couldn't help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, I just made myself sad. <laughs> made um, me sad too, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tyler, uh, is this something that just any mage can use, or would you say it would need you would need to have some advanced knowledge? Definitely would require some advanced knowledge of the dark arts, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would highly recommend that you destroy it. Lest, um, you start some sort of outbreak. Are we talking infernal magic or necromancy or what kind of magic is this? Perhaps all. All of those. All of the above. Fair enough. I think we'll go ahead and keep it. I mean, I... Do you, do you, should we keep it? Should we not just get rid of it? Not have to worry about dealing with creatures coming back later? Tess doesn't really feel the need to destroy it yet, so she just shakes her head and says, No, I, I, I think we'll keep it for now. So as she mentioned, this is sort of an evil arcane focus. Um, so without, without actually invoking that magic, using it, it I mean, it's kind of harmless. Like, it's not just going to randomly start... It, it doesn't seem like it's going to randomly just start summoning stuff on its own. Well, no, but if my anything, concern is... My concern is... Might just like, be, might just be looking for it, you know? They might right? just yeah. look for the pendant. Well, that or, like, I mean, just... If something happens where it gets stolen or gets out of our hands, and then we might have to deal with more creatures being summoned out from the... From, you know, Infernal or whatnot. Where did you find this trinket? Outside a small little hamlet called Stasco. Some Infernals that were summoning what appeared to be a, a large spider. Ooh. That's a very bad omen indeed. Have you informed the guard? Well, we informed the guard of the town. We were on our way to speak with the guard here in this town. I see. Well, if there is anything else. Oh. Well, I mean, while we're here, if you have any wares that might we might be able to purchase. Sure, one moment. Let me grab that data. I have a handout for this now. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me see. Actually, you know what? This is a magic shop. So she has a few uh, different odds and ends here. Let me grab... There it is. So uh, you start to peruse the items uh, that she has in, in stock here, and there's uh, there actually seem to be a lot of these uh, these different wands um, about the uh, the shelves, 
and uh, they all have bear these uh, very nice labels. Go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to paste this in the chat. Hopefully that formats nicely. Oh. <laughs> okay. So if people are going to browse those, I'd have an, I have an action I'd like to take. Okay. So uh, I have the ring I recovered off the captain's body from that first dungeon we did. Okay. Uh, which it's just in my inventory as rang. <laughs> Um, Misku approaches the old lady and goes, Hey, Grandma, is there anything special about this? Just kind of tosses it on the counter. <clears throat> I regret to inform you that I am not your grandmother. However, I think I can identify this uh, trinket. And she uh, once again pulls out her looking glass and uh, looks at this trinket. And, um, oh, um, I can uh, I can definitely inform you of the uh, nature of this magical item. Uh, it will cost you twenty gold. Sure, Miska get those twenty gold on the counter. It actually called. <laughs> Could have sworn that's what it was. Give me just a moment here. Where did I put that? Give me just a moment here. have it we have it um okay so you did pay her for it yes yeah okay so she says uh this is a ring of mind shielding uh, which you can find in the compendium i wish i could like show this to you like just kind of put it in front of you can i you can always just copy it from uh did that pop up from the compendium for you, Miscu. Oh, uh, hold on. Um, it would have popped up in I your. It, it would have popped up in your face. Let me. Um. So yeah. this is. I'm not sure how that uh, added. Now it's popped up. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what it is. That created a handout though. So I'm going to be deleting that. But. Um, that's also available in the compendium. So if you uh, if you click the little I um, for the compendium, just type in Ring of Mind Shielding, oh, and uh, you can go ahead and replace your current your ring with that. Where where is this I at? I'm looking for now. Um, it's on the tab, um, on the chat window tab. Uh, tabs at the top. Yeah, you see it. So you can type it into the search there and then drag that in, or I can do it, or... Uh, an error has occurred. That's oh, not... uh, here, let me grab it. Uh, let me see. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw that in your sheet here. Uh, is it is it the, the rang that's in your yeah, inventory? Yeah, the rang. Okay. I'm going to delete that and drag in. Ring of mind shielding. There you go. You have it now. Awesome. And Misku puts that on and never takes it off. All right. Uh, I'm just looking up some rules real quick, especially for a wand. Old woman, 
Do these wands require attunement? Hmm. I don't believe that they do. Let me double check that real quick here. Uh, I was just looking them up on here. Uh, it doesn't say that they require attunement. At least in the D&D Beyond thing. Usually depends on the wand. Oh, hang on. Uh, the wand of Polymorph does. Uh, the wand of magic missiles does not. Usually attunement. Well, those were those I was looking for. Other oops, usually attunement. Otherwise, I think can be done using it uh, by a short rest, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I'll look to her. Uh, can you tell me about? And he's uh, pointing to the uh, the wand of polymorph about this wand. Wand of Polymorph? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. The Wand of Polymorph. Um, so essentially you can... Um, let me see. I mean, I, I know about the actual things about what it does, but... What do you want to know? Well, more specifically, how much are you asking for it? Ah. Yeah. This is uncommon. Is it uncommon? No, it's very rare. Is it very rare? It's very rare. Because it requires attunement by a spellcaster. Ah, yes, okay. It's very rare. Very well. Uh, let me... That should be on my list here. Right. <laughs> well, uh, it's not in the D and D Beyond, at least. So it's probably. Be... Okay. Hmm. I'm a little put off that that's not on this exhaustive list of items. Uh, give me just a moment here. Um, uh, so this is Wand of Polymorph. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You might be able to... Uh... Yes, that... That particular wand is 45,000 gold. <laughs> for that? For that ugly looking piece of wand? Must be some really powerful magic then. It is indeed. Many well, of my yeah. products are form over function. Function over form. Wait. Oh. I'll give you 20 gold for it. Charisma check. Can I help him with that? <laughs> yes, you can. All right, do it with advantage. That's a charisma save, actually. Oh, so oops. just a. Uh... Come on, roll a nat twenty. That's not a charisma check. That's a magic missile. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Do I just click? Let's that's see. Is it just the 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 stat itself? I think. Oh, it there is. we go. That's a nice roll. However, it's not, not high enough. enough. <laughs> not going to be enough on that one. I need like a forty-five. <laughs> Like, you, you you probably would have needed to hit a nat 20 in order to do that. You would have had to have hit a nat 20. <laughs> can I uh, can I roll for intimidation on this? Can you roll for intimidation? Yeah. You can. Misku leans in trying to look menacing going, I think you said 20. Uh. 
So she kind of rears back a bit and she um, she kind of starts to move toward um, the back door uh, that is behind her her I'll, counter. I'll put, up my, I'll put my hand up. I'll be, no, it's fine. Obviously, this is something we'll have to try to come back and get to another dot. Uh, but I'm going to... So he's going to point to... Uh, so you have two Wand of Magic Missiles on the list. He's going to point to the one that says uh, it also glows when undead are near. So the second one. Can you tell me about this wand at least? The uh, Wand of Magic Missiles? You have two of them on there. So it's going to be the second one, the one that says uh... it also glows when undead are near. Tess kind of lift up, lifts up her hand real quick and she says, Need I remind you that I have an ability to sense undead nearby, so this may not be the kind that you need at the moment. Maybe, but at least it'll also light the way for some of our friends who might need it. Well, I mean, we don't... I mean, I mean, I guess it's probably printed a little bit underneath. Uh, she, in a uh, much more irritated uh, tone than previously, uh, now says, 15,000 gold. <laughs> wow. Ooh, Granny, well, you gonna do us like that? And if you can't afford it, then I suggest you leave. Misku leans over to Ian Fear and goes, trade the barmaid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, Fayal's gonna be like, lean in and be like, I can hear you whispering. <laughs> <laughs> I have good hearing. I agree with Misku. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll turn to the other group. Well, we've accomplished what we've came to do. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can afford these items at this time. So, so you guys, gonna, uh, what's up? Yeah, uh, yeah. I imagine we're all are in fear. At least we'll turn to leave. And Terius and Belphalen follow suit to the city guard. Then. So, um, Barmaid Fayal uh, says, oh, we can find them at the castle. Um, or at the Citadel, rather. Uh, which you'll, you'll see on the uh, map here is number three, up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, you guys proceed there. Um, I, I guess, is, is everyone going? Yes. Yeah. Well, I am. Okay, let me. So uh, as you approach the the gate here, there is another portcullis. Gates are open, and there are guards standing out front. And uh, as you approach, one of them, um, one of them kind of moves before you. It's a small dwarf with a, a long, long beard, uh, down to his knees, in fact. And uh, he is equipped with this halberdy taps it on the ground before you and he says what's your business we have some information regarding attacks that have been happening outside the city walls does this have to do with Stascar yes oh well in that case proceed so he moves out of your way and as you uh Approach the citadel. It's a very, very tall building uh, made out of this very white stone. Uh, and once again, uh, before you, uh, at the very large doors, uh, there are two more guards who proceed to open the doors for you as you approach. You have been uh, allowed past the portcullis and therefore must be welcomed into the castle. Um, and one of them says, uh, Please. Uh, proceed into the main hall. Oh. So, as you enter the the door, there's a long uh, entry chamber. Uh, it's decorated with uh, various ornate uh, and ancient-looking uh, artifacts. Uh, on the walls, there are these uh, old-looking maps and uh, uh, lots of 
uh, different article or uh, not articles, but uh, uh, like documents and things like that that are all protected by these glass uh, cases. So it's almost like a museum in here. Um, and it has a very old and, and very musky uh, kind of smell. Do any of these articles uh, have any sort of like, do they just like look like ran, like normal letters? Do they look like official documentation, things like that? Uh, there are some that, that appear to be official documentation. Um, or at least they, they kind of have the formatting that would, that would suggest that they are such. Uh, any see. that would in particular have like seals, like uh, official seals and whatnot, because uh, any of those kind of documentation, the Enfear is going to keep a very close eye uh, to look for. Yes, actually, there is. Um, uh, there are a, a number of these documents that bear this seal of. Uh, let me see. Let me grab that one more time. So the seal itself is. Um, so it's this arm embowed to the Dexter. Um, see if I can grab that and kind of show you. And, and you've seen this symbol a number of times already, uh, on flags flying about the place. Let me grab that. We're going to call this the, uh, Okay, that should be under, what, art? Yeah, here it is. Okay, let me create a handout for it. I'll just drop that right in. This is going to be... Or actually, we'll call it the... Uh... Uh huh. That's what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> so you've seen you've seen this exact coat on a lot of the, um, uh, like the flags and and other, um, uh, other various uh, places around town. Uh, but that that's what these uh, these wax seals look like uh, underneath this glass. Uh, however, okay. the writing that are that are on these documents as in uh, appears to be in a language that you are not familiar with. Okay. So I guess we'll uh, continue on our way. Anybody else want to inspect anything in this area? I'm a simple woods person there. I suppose there's nothing around I really recognize. No, no, not uh, uh, not in particular. I have a quick question. So Go ahead. Basically, anytime time is not in combat, she's pretty much just constantly smoking from a pipe. Wouldn't anyone have had presence of mind to tell her to put her pipe away before she came in the building? No. Okay, cool. It's probably a really big building, so... Yeah, and, and smoking in general is actually relatively common uh, among okay. people. Uh, so it's, it's not like, you know, it, it's not like considered taboo or anything like that. I mean, you walked into the, the shop and it was just filled with smoke and... Um, otherwise, you've seen people walking about with pipes, and um, um, it's it's kind of considered to be something of uh, sophistication or um, uh, also magical. There are magical different uh, weeds that can be smoked. Mm, okay. So no, nobody bats an eyelash at you. Cool. Uh, so are we proceeding then? Uh, I certainly am. So as you uh, as you come to the end of this hallway uh, there is yet another doorway with these large double doors that stand open and they look old and uh, and very thick and made of this uh, made of this thick wood 
uh, very heavy looking as well. Uh, like if you were to try to grab one and, and swing it about, it might take some force to uh, to bring to uh, to shut. But they look very sturdy otherwise. Uh, the hall expands, or the uh, yeah, the hallway, the entry hall expands into this great and uh, uh, well, very large and spacious um, main hall uh, with these two staircases that wrap down from a loft above. Uh, again, on the walls there are these, uh, or along the walls there are these glass cases and these, um, uh, like these glass frames that are like the big shadow box frames that have uh, various ornaments and uh, um, you see like uh, ancient looking clay pots and all sorts of very ancient looking relics about. Um, you've never quite seen anything like this. Or actually you might have um, Ahara. You might also have Ian Fear, uh, given where you're from, uh, in close proximity to, uh, you know, the great libraries and what. Right. In the museum. Um, so all of them, uh, all of them appear to be uh, of dwarven make, uh, and you can just tell that by what you've seen so far in the town, uh, and the different architecture and things like that. They all kind of bear a very similar, res um, a very similar. Uh, nature about them in their design uh, very boxy um, like uh, in, in fact the uh, the clay pot that I just mentioned has a very boxy design to it uh, as you enter um, one of the guards who is at the uh, bottom of the staircase approaches you and he says uh, your business here please we come regarding the attacks that have been happening on Staskar Oh my! Very good. Just uh, give me a moment. I gotta. Okay. This is uh just a uh, wait right here. I'll uh I'll be right back with the captain. So he uh proceeds up these stairs. The other guard uh kind of nods at the other guard as he proceeds past him, and after a few moments, he comes back down with uh. Uh, with another dwarf. Let me grab a graphic for him. Okay, I like that one too much. Sorry, I... Couldn't catch that. What was that? So he uh, he says you you just wait right there, right. and uh, he proceeds up the uh, the stairs. So he's gonna he comes back down with this other dwarf uh, with him. Give me just a moment here. I'm just generating it real quick. So this dwarf um, actually has this mask uh, over their face. Hmm. And this is who greets you here. It's like these long, this long flowing hair, uh, but no beard, no beard. Uh, seems to be clean shaven. Huh. Uh, he was wearing, uh, he's actually wearing some armor, but he has this scarf over it. Um, and from beyond the mask, he says, uh, can I help you? No, I'm just, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, can I help you? Yes, greetings. My name is Ian Fer Jamalor, and these are my compatriots. Uh, we had some dealings recently with the town of Staskar uh, ah. regarding yes, yes. their attacks. Yes, they uh, they sent word of your uh, of your uh, possible coming. Uh, I am Govin Godbury, House Godbury. 
Greetings, uh, greetings, Lord. Thank you. And to you. So, we, uh, so, in investigating this situation, we come across an interesting artifact. Uh, and he looks, here I'm going to look towards Tess uh, to sort of like, like, you know, kind of tilt his head towards the king, towards the uh, Lord Godbury. Tess pulls out the pendant and shows it. So he takes the trinket and um, immediately seems very uncomfortable. Um, he kind of stirs in his armor a little bit and stares at this thing, kind of grips it. And he says, I've not seen anything like this before. Where, where did you find this? We found this uh, in the forest outside of Staskar, where uh, it belonged apparently to some troops. Uh, and, and sort of looks again towards Tess about uh, the documents. Tess pulls out the journal entries and she hands them over to Govan Godbury. Um, he kind of thumbs through them. He's reading through them. This is in Dwarvish. Interesting. Hmm. Oh my. And these... These came from Bunavar. <sighs> I see. It seems bandits intercepted our shipments from Mekordika. That explains the iron shortage. He looks up at the other guards and kind of nods, and uh, they both make their way upstairs. Uh, hopefully, hopefully with the bandits cleared out, we can resume our expedition preparations well most troubling was that uh, this locket that we found was not in the possession of the bandits it was in possession of creatures that had been summoned from the locket hmm. uh, whose purpose was to summon more creatures from the abyss interesting and they know not they knew not who summoned them forth then what relation to the bandits did these creatures have? That we were aware. Uh, these creatures were summoned with this item that was supposedly given to the bandits, but that they lost track of. So um, we found uh, the remains of many of the bandits who had been attacked by these creatures. Uh, I would presume that this our, our difficult was going to this item was going to be used by them and then when they lost it someone took up that job uh, to just attack Staskar in general and Tarius steps forward and he says indeed someone has summoned these creatures with the aid of this trinket uh, we believe that these um, well given the information here we think that this may have some sort of implication on House Godbury um, implying that someone is um, trying to m perhaps usurp power from nearby Bonaver. Yeah, the concern kind of grows on his face. He's like, "This is something that I'll have to be to alert the guard about, but we cannot put a halt to our um, our our preparations for this expedition. It's too important." If I may ask, where are you heading? Have you not heard? How long have you been in town? We've only just arrived ourselves. I see. Well, myself and um, uh, myself and other members of House Godbury are preparing for an expedition into the Western Mountains, uh, into the Earth Deep. Uh, we're seeking these uh, the ancient dwarven ruins there. Uh, these, all of these artifacts you see, and he gestures widely around the room, um, come from various ancient ruins of my kind. Hmm. And uh, my 
how Scottbury is dedicated to uh, the unearthing of these and the uh, the restoration and the um, uh, the essentially the archiving of uh, dwarven history. I am stunned. I got an AFK for a couple of minutes, but continue without me. Understood. Do you think it's prudent, as these creatures roam the countryside, to go off gallivanting to find more artifacts? Well, this uh, this is the main economy of Boonaver. If we shut down this expedition, we lose, we stand to lose quite a bit, and money, in uh, money in this world is power. And uh, I even assume if. Oh, the creatures aren't stopped, you'll also stu stand to lose quite a bit. Indeed. That's why we aimed to take uh, aimed to take our guard with us. But given l recent events, that this could be a problem. Sounds like you could use a hand. Indeed. He kind of He kind of looks you over. You seem capable adventurers. Would well, you... Uh... We, ha oh, we go. handled our own with the other creatures. Would you be interested in us, um, in providing escort to my band and I, uh, my expeditionary force? My primary concern is to keep these creatures at bay, but I don't object to your commission, should that be prudent for both of us. And then Infer will turn to uh, Antarius and Valphalen. What say you? Valphalen seems distracted. He's uh, he's actually uh, he's actually been sort of eyeing these documents on the walls almost this entire time. Uh, Antarius has been paying uh, very close attention uh, and he says oh, well is there coin involved turns back to uh, Govin who stroking his beard says ah yes we can pay a lump sum and then as well as the MFA will turn to the rest of the group and go. Well, let's say the rest of you feel like taking out, taking out more of these uh, unholy abominations. Uh, Mithku takes a long drag off for a pipe and this exhale is going, yeah, I'll always smash things for cash. Seems the others might be AFK currently. Oh, Tess certainly is a... Vilfalen, do you... Do you... Is there something... Amount... Uh, let me... Let me pull him up real quick. these documents what are they now govin kind of kind of chuckles those are ancient um um essentially uh, to try to explain them they they're kind of these uh documents that um that outline different families uh, that are part of the overarching House Godbury. Uh, so they kind of list these long, like, family trees, and uh, essentially they're they're telling you, like, who the nobility is and things like that. Like, who has rights to House Godbury and the other different dwarven houses. Hmm. I see. It's interesting to have such a devoted... <laughs> what 
what's the word that I'm looking for here? <laughs> it's interesting to see such a detailed account family tree, of one's family history. Tree. Yes, essentially. Oh, we're very serious about the nobility um, and our bloodline and our history. Hence the expedition. So, will you come along? I will join you if the others will. And if the coin is good. And my bow. <laughs> and my axe. And you're like, who the fuck said that? <laughs> <laughs> That's just something that just comes from all just the way at the end of the just hall. Just echoes through the hall. <laughs> Uh, Ian Fair will sort of look down towards his uh, right hand at the mention of these uh, different families um, and then look towards uh, Godbury and says, bringing up families, I actually have something I wish to ask of you. Um, while you're talking, these guards, um, the guards from before start to come back down the stairs and they seem to have uh, some sort of kit with them. Yes, what is your question? Uh, so, like, Ian Fair's going to go, try not to be too alarmed, but... And, like, as he pulls out from, like, basically within a sleeve from his uh, right hand, uh, you'll see, like, the hilt of a, like, w with a, of a dagger that comes out, and he starts to, like, show him markings that are uh, on this dagger. I found this... Uh, in my youth, and I have been trying to search for any information about these symbols. Perhaps you might have some. So he starts to look it over. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, these are... These are the markings of one of the great dwarven houses, House Drac, namely. House Drac. Interesting. What can you tell me about this house? Well, until recent times, and this is widely known information, he explains that uh, House Drac actually has a, uh, a man... Uh, what is his name? Uh, his name is Craven Drac. And, um... He, uh, he resides in Godbury, uh, but he is actually um, about to be crowned emperor. Uh, he came to leadership as one of the uh, two sons of the um, the previous emperor, uh, who was uh, uh, Weiss. Now, Weiss's previous policy aligned with House Godbury, so he had full support um, from from that house. Uh, his focus was the restoration, the exploration of dwarven ancient ruins, which has been a huge part of the economy in um, in Suic and in Godbury. Um, however, uh, Drax's policy, uh, he seems to be changing things up a bit, and he is kind of, uh, he is more geared toward the industrialization uh, of Godbury. Thank you for the information. Uh, if the rest of my companions are going to jump along, then I certainly wouldn't mind uh, heading along as well to find some information out. Indeed. Just a moment here, guys. Okay. Um, so, Tess, what you missed is they um, 
uh, Ian Fear kind of produced this dagger, uh, saying that you know this was something that he found. Um, what, what was it, Ian Fear? Could you repeat? It was uh, something. Uh, it was a dagger that I found uh, in my youth, and I've been trying to search for more information about the markings on it. Govan was able to identify that these belong to a house Drac, um, who actually is the uh, is the last name of the. Uh, well, the house that is currently taking power in the uh, among the dwarven empires. Okay, House Drac. Drac, D R A C H. What does the marking carving look like? You know what? That is a really good question. Give me just a moment here, and I will grab that. Uh, oh, come on! There we go. He's had this dagger the his childhood. Since childhood. Oh. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. Um Oh, I like this. Oh, man. There we go. That's what it looks like here. Hmm. Let's see. What is it called? Perbend, Sinister, Sable, and Ghouls? Ghouls? Three church bells argent. So cool. <laughs> Interesting. Um, right, so that, that is the insignia on the dagger. So, uh, and uh, so Antarius and Valthalen have, have decided to come along uh, on this expedition, and so have, uh, well, so far, so have I. And uh, at least so has uh, Misku and uh, Ahara. Yeah, Tess will be there too. And we'll look towards uh, Fayal. So is this the kind of adventure you are looking towards? I... She hesitates. As much as... I want to continue with you. I was kind of intent on staying here in Bunavar. And then you fair go. I understand. Well, hopefully we'll meet back up and have our adventures some other time. Yes. That would be nice. You can, uh, you can always find me at the, the Brewer's Guild here. Well, well then, I, I suppose I should be off. And she kind of curtsies and, and leaves. Well, Godbury chimes in. We have, we have some other preparations to do beforehand. Uh, we weren't expecting to depart for another few days. Please, um, take full advantage of the hospitality of Bunavar, and should you be needing anything during your stay, please let us know. Otherwise, when do we leave? two days' time. Um, please meet back here um, on the morning uh, of that 
day. All right. I, for one, could use a meal and a drink, Valphalen says. I could use eggs. Yeah, rations are only so good. I could definitely use with something actually filling. To the bar, then, and Harrius says, and proceeds to walk back through the big giant door, <laughs> the double door. So you guys make your way back into town and uh, back into the center of town here. Um, there's a small bar uh, kind of close to where you were at before. Uh, it's right here. Or actually, no, it's right here, let's say. <laughs> and let me kind of load up a... That's not... Okay, perfect. It's kind of a small uh, bar. Let me generate it real quick. All right. Uh, so in the market quarter, surrounded by these shadowed alleys and, uh, and these active marketplaces, the town around it bustling, you walk in to this bar. Um, and it's actually a two-story building um, with stairs leading off of the south end here. Can I click? I can't click there. We don't is see the map. It? Oh, you do not yeah. you don't see the map? All we have is black. Oh, I know why. Because I didn't disable the fog of war. <laughs> Is it a place where everybody knows your name? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not always glad we came. Um, there's a small, uh, there's a very small bar up to the uh, the north end, and uh, there are actually quite a few people in here. Um, well, four people, uh, namely. Uh, there seems to be a uh, female human sitting at the bar. Uh, let me see. And uh, she is wearing these um, these fine clothes and jewelry. Uh, there is a uh, a male dwarf sitting across from a male human. Um, on both at this table here. And there is a male halfling, uh, kind of sitting on his own at the other end of the bar. Uh, let me actually grab some tokens for these guys and kind of get a visual going. So what did I say? We had a uh, female human. That looks good. They hang it out at the bar. We have a, as I say, a male dwarf. Yeah, actually, that works out great. And we have I don't have a uh, another token for these, so there we go.
Okay, and then we have the barkeep, who is um, kind of this female dwarf who's just toiling about, um, you know, presenting these drinks to everyone. I'm trying to find kind of a good female dwarf, but of course they're few and far between, aren't they? Uh, anything? Guys? Racist. Right? You guys really don't have a female dwarf token. Oh, thank you. Wizards of the Coast came through again. Okay, except when I dragged it in, it didn't do anything. Boo. There, there we go, got it. Ha. <laughs> there it is. Awesome. One. So, the innkeeper, as you come in, she seems very busy, and she's cleaning these glasses and filling up drinks and handing them out and... and you see the exchange of coin and, and just very busy, um, given even the amount of patrons that are currently hanging out here. She uh, acknowledges you as you come in. I guess there's a big empty table. I'm probably just going to find a place in the corner there. Okay. okay. Yep. So you go and you sit at the table. Um, Valphalen and Antarius um, um, go with you and they, they sit it, uh, across from you as before. Two days time. Perhaps there is some money to be made within that, um, within that amount of time. There must be something to do. I'm sure we could find some work. Do you think we should uh, ask around this place? Oh, it's a good place to start. The uh, bartender makes her way over to your table. Uh, what do you have? A mead for myself, and uh, if you know of anyone who is somewhat in need of some hired hands hmm. thinks on it for a moment let me see what I've got here sorry stepped away for a bit what I am miss um so Ahara and Val and Antarius have sat down at a table and they're asking about work from the uh, uh, from the bar here. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm, she says. I'll have to think on that. Let me fill your drinks and I'll return. And for you, gentlemen, Val Phelan kind of tugs at his, um, at his hood, pulls it over his head a bit. Uh, an ale, if you please. Antarius uh, places his hand on the table and he says the very same. He pulls out a, uh, or he produces a, um, a sack of coin and sets it on the table before him. Uh, Valphalen then produces a pipe and proceeds to light up and, and puffs this large um, plume of smoke um, from his nostrils, actually. Sure. And um, your companions, who seem to be still standing, uh, do they also want ale? Absolutely. Tess walks over to the end of the table. And um, where would you like to sit? We have... You know what? I'll just drag you guys in. Is, it, would that, is that cool? You guys want to get... Yeah, yeah, I'll just sit with everyone. I mean, wherever You're everyone's cozy. sitting, she's just going to grab a okay. pint and fucking chug it. Okay. So she goes off. Um, kind of 10 bar and, and fills the drinks. Hmm. And Tarius kind of leans over the table and he's like, this would probably be a good place to also get um, perhaps some news from around the area. See what's, what's going on in the world. 
We've been out in the wilderness so long, we may have lost track. Val Phelan kind of huffs, <laughs> and that smoke kind of comes out of his, uh, his kind of nose, his mouth, just everything. Fills the air before you. It's kind of a sweet scent this time. The vicissitude of men's lives are so short. I'm not sure it's worth it to get involved most of the time, but I'm happy to talk. So she comes back and places your drinks before you. And she goes, Oh, there seems to be a lack of work for adventurers. We don't have problems with monsters here in um, here in Bunavar. However, um, I did just hear that the blacksmith um, is looking for any anyone who could produce iron in the raw. Uh, any of you who might be good at um, such as mining uh, might be able to make some coin from him. Appara there has been some shortage, uh, though I know not much more. You might ask him. Seems like a good lead as any. Indeed. Yes, his shop is uh, just here in the market, um, just off the main road. You can't miss it. Well, thank you, good lady. Uh, no problem. And Harrius stops her and says, um, Is there any news? She kind of thinks on it for a minute. She says, you know, I have heard there's an expedition uh, happening from uh, Robert Gnell in Bria. And they, uh, they've come and they've set out from... <laughs> this, that's, the, that's the name of it. <laughs> Me Merarel. Merarel. <laughs> Whenever you. In Roshia. So a murmur in Rorschach. Would you like to. Where to has it? They've unearthed something really big. How big was it? I heard. And she kind of leans in and kind of looks over her shoulder and she says, I've heard it's a dragon. <laughs> like a real dragon? Like an ancient, a dead dragon. But it's like this ancient dragon. It doesn't, doesn't have wings or, or any way to like fly. Which we've never seen anything like that. Is it a serpent dragon? Yes. The dragon without wings, isn't that just a really big lizard? A worm, if you will. Really, really big. Other than that, everyone's talking about the city of Godbury coming back into power. What with, uh, you know, the crowning of Emperor Craven Drac. How do you feel about this Mr. Drac person? Oh, it's just another exchange of power. As long as I've got patrons in my bar, not much else matters to me. Well, anything to eat then? She points up at this menu. If you are hungry. The menu is as such. That is on the uh, in the chat there. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be back behind the bar. And she returns to serving uh, the other patrons. You hear the halfling kind of pipe up. It's like Just about time, loudly. And he has this long silvery hair and he's got these really dark looking eyes. Uh, he seems to otherwise wear this very plain looking clothing. It doesn't seem anything special. 
He kind of slams his fist on the on the table. Just seems really angry. I'm going to go ahead and yell at him from here. If you've got something to say, come over here. How about you mind your own business? There's more of us than you, kind sir. <clears throat> he goes back to drinking. Rude. Everybody is kind of now staring at him <laughs> in the bar, you've noticed. Uh, so, the inferior will sort of uh, flag the waitress over when she's got a free minute uh, for when he's going to place his order, but uh, when she comes in, be like, can you tell me what his deal is? Oh, he's always like this. He's a, he's an old codger. Just, you know how it is. And then, uh, or for his, he's gonna place the order of the, uh, the braised pheasant with nutmeg. Ooh. Tess will have the same thing. And I. I'll go for the pork. Ooh, coming up. Give me a few minutes. So she uh, goes back and starts to prepare all the food. And this uh, the same halfling kind of looks over and he's like, you're holding everything up! And she, the barmaid turns around. She's like, will you pipe down? <laughs> Quit bothering my patrons. This is business. And he kind of grumbles and continues drinking. I'm going to finish my drink and throw it at him. Hang on. I have something I'm thinking of trying. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think... Party member. So where exactly would the old man be compared to where we are? He is right here. You guys are at this table yeah. over here. Perfect. This should be fun. All right. Uh, heck, why not? I'm going to cast Charm Person on him. Oh! What level this is spell how I get is more this? Party members. This is a level one. You attempt to charm a humanoid you can see within range. A wisdom saving throw and does so with advantage if you or your companions are fighting it. Okay. Are you going to show off your thighs and veer? <laughs> Thick thighs save lives. <laughs> uh. Skies out, thighs out. What do I have to. Okay, is he rolling that's, that's anything? That's a mood. So he has to roll wisdom a saving throw. He must throw. make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, okay. so. Okay. What does he have to save against? Check those dummy thick thighs. What does uh, he have to save against? So that's, I believe that's going to be against thighs, your... obviously. He has to do a saving throw against those thick thighs. That's going to be your Ooh. spell save DC. Where is that? It should be on your spells page of your uh, sheet here. So let me actually get... Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it. He's a halfling. I'm just preparing the command already. Proficiency plus charisma for you, I think? Nope. At least I don't think so, because that, that would be, like, really, really... Hey. So he just has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, give me just a moment here. So. Let me grab. Sorry, one See, moment. 
this is clearly how Ian Fear got uh, our mage uh, fail. <laughs> Flashed his thighs. How that was the end of the story. You gotta manage, man. <laughs> well, I mean, since Fayal's gonna be staying in town, like... While I'm doing this, um, can you... Um, what level spell was this? This is level one. Level one. Can you also roll your wild magic surge? That's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. Very well. There it is. Okay. What's his name? All right. Come on, come on. Perfect. Okay. So he's rolling a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw, yes. Wisdom. Whoops. That does not save. <laughs> Can I offer my inspiration point to help him re-roll that? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he suddenly... <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh wait, is it, it does he roll with an advantage? Only if we're attacking him. If you were your was, companions. Oh, okay, just, okay. Yeah. That's why I was like I uh, I was Spons. like instead of him throwing the glass before let me do this first. So he um you he, you see his uh, he kind of turns towards you as you as you cast and he like he he looks angry and visibly after you cast your spell, he looks a lot less angry <laughs> he, look, he actually kind of looks happy to see you and he proceeds to walk over and he goes old friend uh, uh i forget what is your name it's ian fear of course sir. oh yes ian fear a drink for my friends and, uh, and so i'll say come sit down tell us what ails you sir the barmaid comes over what the hell just tell it it's my this is my natural talent. He says, Oh, I'm my back hurts today and Oh, I'm just not it's just not been a good day. It, it's hardly ever a good day anymore. The iron shortage is cutting into my business. What is your business, sir? I'm a farmer on the outside of town. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then, uh... Uh... <laughs> so his eyes kind of shift a little bit. The barmaid comes over and brings you all your round of ale. Sets these ales down before you. She says, your food will be here momentarily. Um, barmaid. So you said you're a farmer. How has the uh, iron shortage has been affecting you? Oh, uh... I can't get any tools, of course. Blacksmiths all out of iron. Size so kind of shift again. Hmm. May I throw my cup at him now? <laughs> well, that's entirely up to you now. And Terius kind of gestures. Can we avoid a fight, please? <laughs> all right.
the barmaid finally makes her way back over and delivers your food. Um, and you pay her accordingly. What time of day is this? Uh, it's about noon. Shall we uh, check out this blacksmith character? Balfalin takes a bite uh, from his food. And Tarius, he's, he says, ah, yes, let's just finish our meal and we can depart. Of course. Well, Ian Fear, I'd like to hear your thoughts and more about this dagger. So... I'm going to look down towards this dagger a bit. Uh, uh, and sort of gives a bit of a sigh. It's uh, a bit of a long story. Uh, oh, do tell. Well, I don't know if you could tell or not, but I'm not exactly the most practiced in my magic as many uh, of my fellow. Well, I'm a hopeful court magician, let's be honest here. But uh, just I, I've ever since I was born, ever since I could remember, I've always been, I've always had plenty of power in casting a spell, but just no control over it. And Ever since I was younger, uh, I've always just been, I've been a bit of a troublemaker, I suppose. I mean, someone tells me you're not supposed to do something, naturally you got to do it, because you got to know why. And uh, so I used to do a lot of, I was put in the care of this magistrate for our, the, my town. Well, I mean, you might have heard the town. It's uh. It, it, it's got a pretty well-known name. Uh, hold on. Where is it? Uh, Shalfhaven? Shop of, yeah, Shalfhaven. Uh, of, and, uh... Ahara, you've heard of this place. It's in South Malia. Right on. And, uh... It's, uh... I used to have this uh, friend of mine a long time ago. I kind of hoped it would have been a bit more. Um, one day we were supposed to meet up uh, on basically what would have been my usual weekly uh, escape from the magistrate, and she never showed. And, uh, when I went looking for her uh, at her family home, considering she introduced me and everything, uh, they were all murdered. Uh, the home burnt down. Uh, a lot of the great tapestries they uh, managed, maintained all throughout the kink for the area, like all disappeared. And the only thing I found uh, was this dagger, which had been embedded in her. Uh, and ever since, I have been trying to find the man, the creature. Who would have dared achieve such an act? Because if it's the last thing I ever do, I'm going to use this dagger to cut his heart out. So he knows just a fraction of what I felt today. And Tarius leans over the table at this and he says, Revenge. Although it seems like revenge may bring you solace. Rarely is that actually the case. Tess, having fucking chugged her ale at this point and just slams her fist down on the table and she has tears in her eyes and she and she says, I'll help you in any way that I can in fear. <laughs> oh, thank you. Constitution it's... check, please. <laughs> <laughs> For her? Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hammered. Yeah, she is gone. She just she that checked that as fast as she could. <laughs> so she is just 
she's like crying. full on bawling right now over Ian Fear's story, and she's just like, I'll help you, my friend. And Terry's looking at you, goes, It's noon. <laughs> Tess just shakes her shakes her head and says, He's my friend, I'll help him. Welcome to our new show, Day Drinking in Delancia. <laughs> Bottle. Can I Stop throw playing. my cup at her? <laughs> <laughs> Antarius face palms. <laughs> uh, so it's about eighteen fifty-seven. Do we need to wrap things up? Do we have some more time? Or uh, I mean, that's up to you guys. I'm kind of hungry and want to get food, so. Probably good to wrap this up. Okay. It's a nice little place to close out this session. So the next time we'll finish up this bar scene and we will proceed to go meet the blacksmith and see if we can get some work done over the next few days. Awesome. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to do in closing? I'm sure uh, Ahara wants to throw his class. <laughs> it sounds like he does. I mean, I'll I can throw it into the fire and shout more mead. Well, yeah, but then you have to pay for the glass. Very yeah, true. So he just throws the glass, and our session ends like an Eric Andre cut. <laughs> Another. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> See Hannibal in the background, and he's like, "Whack, whack." <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, this is VG Punks, the video game punks, signing off. Keep a song in your heart. <laughs>